Hello, everybody. Thanks for being here. Um, we are ready for uh, Chris Pierce. Yes. Yes. Well, Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> always forget that we don't. No, no, no. You don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> so if we can go around the room and introduce ourselves. Uh, Carol Massey, McDonald's Sanchez. I'm Sarah Bessley with the uh, Sunset and Mind Bid. Happy Committee, President uh, Mind Stakeholder. Uh, I'm Mike Pogorzelski, I'm the Director of the Academy Film Archives here. Chase Gordon, Davidson Young Real Estate and Gordon California Company. Charles Erkley, the Everly Company. Jimmy Gamble, the Bill Office. Devin Strecker with the Bid. Melissa Logan, and the Music. George Rosenthal with Animal Trail. Elizabeth McDonald, Alec Gibson. Just where I'm with it. Hey everybody, I'm Chris Pearson with Pleasant and Center Properties. Um, I don't know the best places I've ever had. Maybe you can start to sit in the corner. You can use my chair. Oh, thanks. Uh, so I'm excited to be here. I really appreciate you guys giving us some time. So I'm just going to talk about our latest project that we are currently under entitlement for, which is 5901 Sunset Boulevard. It's at the northwest corner of Sunset and Bronson right next to CIM's Sunset Garden Project. So right now it's a empty 264 stall parking lot that we use for Sunset Bronson Studios for Elbow Park. Parking. So as we are now underway with our Sunset Bronson Studios project, that'll complete sort of in the end of 16, we'll have a brand new parking structure there that we'll be able to move all of our parkers from off-site on the site and create this site for development. Um, just to give you an idea of sort of timeline where we are, so we are finishing up all of our technical studies and should submit to the city uh, by the end of this month and have our draft EIR out by, I would say, the middle of November. Um, and so we are really excited and hopefully we'll be through city hearings by June of next year. So I'm uh, going to go and design that to, to break ground by 2016. Uh, so what we're building... Question, how big is the lot? 64,000 square feet, about an acre and a half. Um, so what we're building is an 18-story uh, mixed-use, primarily commercial office building. On the ground floor, we're hoping to attract a, a market tenant. Um, so we're looking to roughly a 26,000 square foot space um, that we're targeting different market tenants to potentially fulfill. Uh, the rest is two stories of below grade parking, roughly five stories of above grade, of above grade parking, and then 11 stories of office. Uh, the stories on sort of two through four are large floor plate office uh, products, so I think 50,000 square feet open. Um, as you can see, probably better than this image, we're trying to incorporate as much open space as possible for the project. Um, this is the north side of the project looking towards uh, the Hollywood Hills and the Hollywood sign. Um, so I'll have these pop-outs actually throughout the building, so some of them will be on sunset, some of them will be on the north side. Um, but our hope is to really create sort of a, a vertical creative campus. Uh, we think with the energy on Sunset Boulevard with, with our projects, with, with uh, Columbia Square, with Sunset Gordon, and just uh, Hollywood in general, that it's going to be a pretty attractive product for new media and tech companies to come to Hollywood. With space sort of filling up on the west side, we think Hollywood is a natural progression uh, for tech companies. There's a, there's a great synergy that they feel with, with entertainment. And uh, with a product like this, we think uh, we'll be a natural home for them. So, you know, happy to answer questions. If there are any, but I want to make it short and sweet because I know you guys are meeting. So. You have the total value of the project? The total value will probably be, uh, if I have to give you a round number, about 180 million. Yeah, I mean, that's the cost. So you, you're you adding a lot of parking to the area, even considering that you're paying no more parking. Yeah, so, it's a single line yeah, of so we're, right now we have 216 stalls that we're removing from the inventory, and we're adding uh, roughly 1,000. Uh -huh. So, and while the goal is to obviously make sure that our, our tenants have enough parking, if there, if there comes a chance where there is, not a need for parking for our tenants, we've been more than willing to open it up for you know, public use after that. Um, and even, you know, 
top hours I could see is obviously making this available in public use because a thousand stalls at night probably will go unused if we don't. So we want to make sure it's as beneficial as possible to the community. And there's no residential? No residential. And did you say that the ground floor was one retail? Well, ideally, ideally. It could be subdivided if we find tenants that want to subdivide it. Ideally, we're hoping that we attract a market tenant. Sometimes the market that we fill that space. So no apartment, just just, just off the phone part. Yeah. What do you mean also the icon? Yeah, so we're building icon, which is another 300,000 square foot development that we're actually under construction with now, um, right at our Sunset Office Studios around the corner there, where you see the current retail tower. So, is there any relationship between the two I mean, they'll, they'll be a, a, a concrete synergy, right? A lot of it's they're concrete building, there's a lot of glass. Um, they're both supposed to be vertical campuses. ICON is going to deliver a lot sooner than, than this project will. Um, but the hope is, with the energy you get at Columbia Square, with, when they start leasing up, we'll be right behind them with ICON. That will start leasing up. That you're going to get a critical mass of businesses that want to be in Hollywood and specifically on the Sunset Strip. And we think once that happens, projects like this will just be that much more valuable and that much more exciting to see happen. The CIM has residential component, doesn't it? Yes, yeah, CIM has. They're, yeah, they primarily, have residential. Residential. primarily residential. They have some retail on the ground floor and some office right above that. We create people can live there and then work in here. That's the, that's the goal. I mean, there's a lot of obviously residential coming up on Sunset. We think um, will help. We also obviously sell our products. When do you hope to start construction? Uh, we hope to start construction assuming everything goes according to plan with entitlements. Uh, probably end of 16, Q3 of 16. Okay, any more questions? Uh, yeah, what, what, what are you Hopefully, it's the market. We're open to other opportunities, but we think, you know, being on Sunset, we think the supermarket would be really helpful considering all the new uh, residential for you. Um, so that's something we're, we're targeting. How big was the space? Bob, you make the plan. Roughly 26 square feet. Is that a project total? square feet total. So 26,000 retail, 27,000. Fabulous, too. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. So, go ahead. Uh, it's a great project. I've seen uh, several uh, renditions, uh, and this is really a great, uh, great forward-thinking project. Um, uh, you're in the, you're going to be in the sunset today, right? Yes. Yes. So that's awesome. Yes. <laughs> um, and I think, you know, we own the Sunset Gower Studios. We've been around for a while. We've oh, absolutely. I'm just uh, into the community. So. A anything that uh, that we can do to help support going forward? Or? Well, you know, I mean, we're obviously going to go out to public comment in the, in the future, so the more positive comments, the better. But, um, you know, we're just excited for the partnership, and hopefully we bring in tenants. They can fit in the community real nice, and you guys are definitely welcome to come. So I think it'll be helpful. Thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you, guys. Your presentation. Okay, I see we have a guest. Um, would you like to uh, introduce yourself and uh, make a public comment? Um, no, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, approval of the board minutes. Has everybody had a chance to read the minutes they were sent to you? All right, would anybody like to um, approve those? Make a Jason Melissa? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. Thanks. All right. So now we have somebody doing the treasurer's report. I think that's Sarah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you want me to go on with something else? Uh, why don't I finish the treasurer's report and then we can um, come back? I just want to ask you about something first. Mm -hmm. um, Should I do the marketing? Yeah, you can move on to it. Um, okay. Marketing. Sure. So about a week and a half ago, we held the third annual award-winning Sunset and Dine. Um, like, very happy that it's all over and done with now. <laughs> uh, but it went really well. Um, I think we had the biggest attendance so far. And we, um, in your packet, there's a profit and loss statement. So we actually did make 
a pretty healthy profit again this year, uh, just under $4,000. Um, so it was a little difficult since we had a new location. Um, there was a lot of things that I didn't foresee, but luckily Gary at the Taglion provided a lot more things that um, that he took care of, like the ice and the soda and the water and everything. So I think it was a really great event. Um, the, the guys from the Center of Blessed Sacrament were there with the booth, so they felt like they got to really um, get to know people in the neighborhood and make people aware of what, what work they do over at the center. Um, and thanks to Amoeba and LA Film School for providing the music and the bands. And thank you, all of you who helped plan it and sponsored the event. Do um, so we have a caption yes. to um, recommend pers to, um, the proceeds amount <laughs> With the, uh, <coughs> to go to the center? Yes. So yes. There's yes. A, that will be, yeah, there's a, um, there's a little spreadsheet in your packet. There's about 3,800 left to go to the center. Yeah. yeah. And this is just from yeah. this year, so it doesn't count any rollover that we had from, pre from the previous year. How much up was the attendance? I'm still calculating the attendance because I have to go through all the all the tickets and the sign-in list, but it definitely I'm sure it was over 300. Compared to do you remember, do you remember what we had last year? It's about it's a little bit more than I think last year we had about also right under 300. Okay. Um, and the first year I think we had 250. I I just want to underscore that um, it was really amazing what the committee and Devin pulled off this year. I don't know. Um, I saw most of you there that night, but um, just knowing that we didn't have a professional planning um, company come in and, you know, knowing that all of you guys pulled together all these resources was, is, is really extraordinary. And I just want to also point out that we have all the press. Um, this is not a complete um, packet, but it's all the press clippings, um, major press clippings that Devin and the committee um, got through working with Heating to Code, um, and then also through your individual channels, PR channels. But um, there's a full list on the end of, um, at the end of the packet that just kind of lists all the various um, blog posts and media outlets that picked up on this. And I think this is the first year that we've ever had any sort of measurable amount of press. So um, that, too, is really um, worth Congratulations. Yeah, I just want to say as a board member, I really appreciate Devin's efforts and uh, all of the time and effort that he put into this, um, trying to connect the community, um, uh, the business community and the residential community, getting Haynes and Co. involved. Um, and, uh, you know, every, everyone on the staff that helped with this just did a great job. Um, I think it's an important event, and it's going to get better and better um, uh, about how what 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 the bid's all about, and about bringing the community together. And uh, the, do do we have a record of uh, who the uh, attendees were? Was there any record on that? Yeah, Jenny and I have the sign-in sheets and the ticket okay. that people turn in. So I'm just going to cross-reference. Um, all the tickets that were turned in with the people that signed in and the ticket number so we can get an accurate um, count of the participants. Okay. One, I mean, when we talk about this in committee, we can carry on about other things, but um, it might be an opportunity to give the attendees from this year, you know, first shot at tickets next year or something like that, or maybe even a little discount just as a uh, bonus for attending this year's just, uh, something to think about. And uh, who bought the uh, tickets online? Do we have their info? Uh, okay. okay, so I guess we can proceed to um, recommend that, is it 387149? Get uh, forwarded to the center as a donation. And we could probably increase that to 4,000. There is some rollover from last year or so in that account. So do we have we have um, we have a, a, enough in that account to cover some marketing also. So in the CHC marketing, I think you grossed about four thousand last year, so we'd be carrying over the same amount for next year. Well, I make a motion to do that if we need to, um, <laughs> uh, and uh, 
to uh, give the total benefit of 4000 to the center. I'll second. Second. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? It's passed. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we have a third report. We have no, Derek. No. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Did you? Devin? Devin, I cut you short. We have only in Hollywood and England. Yes, um, so as you know, um, We've been mailing out the Sunset and Vine newsletter along with the Hollywood Entertainment newsletter together as two separate newsletters. But because we put the websites together into the Only in Hollywood blog, um, I'm recommending that we merge the newsletters into one Only in Hollywood branded newsletter, um, since we're already sending them out together anyways. And then they'll still retain uh, separate calendars for both bids, and each story will be marked if it's a specific story for a particular bid, but I think it will be interesting for the stakeholders to have a broader scope of what's going on in Hollywood. Um, and so the, the property owners and the other bid will get to see your stories and vice versa. So I'm hoping that you will agree that that would be a good idea. I think sure. great idea. Yeah. there are stakeholders that have well, a stake in both. Right, so right. Yeah. That's great. So we don't need an action on that, though? No. spreadsheets that TJ has prepared for us this month. Um, the only thing that I, there's nothing um, extraordinary to report. Um, just uh, want to let you know that we did receive notice from the city that we have another $9,727 that um, is due to us in, uh, which will be counted uh, or deposited in October. Um, and then if you're looking at your cash flow sheet, I just want to point out that we look to be ending the year with about $109,000 of cash on hand. So, okay. Good. Yeah, so, um, yeah, and you know, everything is pretty um, consistent this month. We uh, had a relatively lower amount due for security, and that's just a result of time with the bills. There's nothing more than that. Does anybody else have any questions? Is that a profit? Yeah, it's a cash on hand, so anything that we have. Roll over, roll over to the next year. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Would somebody like to um, make a motion to approve the treasurer's report? Move it. Okay. Anybody second? All those in favor? Yeah. Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, that's passed. Thank you. All right, so we move on to sheets eight and eleven. <laughs> Sorry, budget preparation for 2015. Yeah, so um, you know what? I went ahead and um, <coughs> took a stab at um, identifying what our actual right now and then also projecting what our expenses are going to be for the next three months um, and also kind of categorizing this according to our management district plan categories. So we really want to stick to these categories um, that are set out actually in our, in our, um, in our uh, management plan and I um, went ahead and also calculated the variance um, just to see where we were over and under. And then um, and then we have a, a 2015 budget amount. This is just the first stab at this, and I would like to meet with Kitty and whomever else would like to um, talk about budgeting for next year in the next couple weeks, just to kind of watch <coughs> these numbers and make sure that we have the appropriate amount um, allocated. But this is just a first attempt, and I think the one thing I just really want to point out to you is that um, our marketing budget in this past year was um, reduced to, 15,000 when originally in our management plan we had about um, 37,000. So I want to boost that back up um, and get it more in line with our original percentage, which was about 
2.6%. And so if we brought it back up to 40 grams, we're looking at a 2.47% provision. And so, some of that also for uh, sunset and value. Okay, you can use that for um, for marketing purposes. When we hired Haynes and Co., we were clear in saying that we wanted them to promote the entire district also um, in their efforts. So we could utilize it for a marketing campaign. Pole banners are pretty expensive, but um, there might be some other ideas that um, Devin and the marketing committee could come up with that uh, you guys could all spend. Uh, so uh, the offer is out there for you if you want to be involved in this yeah. process. Yeah, if anybody would like to participate in that, and you know, I'm going to go kitty into this, obviously. Um, and then anybody else who wants to come over and have lunch with us. And I'll see there's the lunch. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so <laughs> yeah. if you want to, if, you, if you're in, uh, contact uh, Sarah. Sarah? Yeah, I'm more than happy to. Okay. No, I'm okay. happy to. I'd love to. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. 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 So, um, um, so going back to the landscape, um, I on my way over here, I was expecting to deliver <coughs> some unfortunate news about our trees. Um, but I, in fact, got a really incredible call today from um, from one of our security officers who has been helping to kind of keep an eye out. Um, this, again, are the 48 trees that were vandalized by one or two individuals. So we're, um, we've been on the lookout for, for this person, um, suspect. And we had a, a camera installed to just kind of monitor one of our trees. Um, in hopes that uh, we would see the suspect again on camera. And that um, when we went to go capture the video, um, we found out that the camera had stopped um, working, so we weren't able to capture his image. Mm -hmm. And so um, so that was last week, that was Friday. Um, and and then, still then the license? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was still, yes. So he hit again this past week, so it was another five trees that were hit. Um, so, bringing his total to 44, no, 54 trees so far. Um, Van vandalized. Some made it back. Back. Some, yeah. Of that, some did not. Yeah, so the ones that were even growing back, he snapped them. Um, so, um, so, it's incredibly frustrating. And then I get this call today from uh, Don, who's Don Anderson, who's our security officer, who um, has been talking to a lot of the business owners here on Vine Street to see if they've noticed any, you know, been any witness to, to any of this vandalism. And uh, as you guys all approved a thousand dollar report for anybody who could help us capture the suspect. And in fact, um, he calls me today and he said, um, we, uh, we have been in communication with one of the property owners, and I'm going to keep this under wraps for now until we are able to capture the, the suspect. But um, we have him on camera, and he matches the same description as the previous suspect. Mm -hmm. And um, the, uh, we we want to show you the video. So um, so we have a very clear picture now, and um, we will be uh, using that to help uh, represent him. So. And if you don't have so it, does anybody does recognize who it is yeah, from yeah. the streets? Okay. Yeah, yeah, and no, the okay. business owner knows who okay. he is. Oh, okay. um, He's not one of the business owners. <laughs> 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 I'm a better business owner. <laughs> so, um, so hopefully next month I'm going to have some ideas to share. Good. Another video? What's that? Maybe. If we capture our new role. Oh, but the video that you say you have? Yeah. Are going to see it? Not today. Not today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It'll be a special screening year. <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it yet. This guy needs to do some work on the Yeah, exactly. Right? That would be not that great. Yeah, it's a really deep pull. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's uh, 60 trees in, you know, just a matter of a few months, and we have no, I have no confidence that if we plant any trees out there, I was beginning to feel as though we were, you know, on our way up, and we weren't going to have to worry 
talking about the trees that had already been hit and that were growing back. And then, sure enough, this past week, he, he hit again. Yeah. So, Sarah, with just one more tree, it's still a misdemeanor. You know, it has to hit like 20 grams, I think, in order to be a misdemeanor. Although the city attorney felt, you know, with another, um, it sounds like you have good evidence. Yeah. Um, she might be able to work with that. So, she's very interested to help us. Yeah, and um, the Hollywood Mobility Summit, this again, just is, I'm incredibly excited about um, holding the summit, hi Elba, um, in January. Um, we are, uh, I actually attended a, a, a presentation by Jeanette Sadakon from New York City, she's the former transportation commissioner, she's now with Bloomberg Associates. Um, incredibly dynamic. I think I shared the, t the TED talk that she does. She has done about um, bike lanes and bike sharing and um, pedestrianizing streets in, in New York City. She's a remarkable woman. She's um, and she has um, done some great work in terms of greening uh, New York City. And she now is uh, a consultant with Mayor Garcetti's office, um, and they are uh, very eager to help us um, kind of have this conversation as a community and talk about our mobility options here. So um, very excited about that and um, she's also very excited to work with us, which uh, when I went to go shave her hand after the, the uh, presentation, I pulled out a very sweaty um, business card because I was like, I'm like a huge fan of her so I was nervous and I'm like pulling out this card and I hand it to her and, I said, you know, I've just been, you know, waiting to talk to you. I just, I'm so excited to work with you. And she said, we, I will do anything to help you. She said, anything that Hollywood does, the whole world is watching. So, um, it's, uh, I guess it. that's a nice statement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, if we had, we could resend her TED talk out, maybe. If yeah. you guys haven't watched it, it's really, really great. Right. Right. Or, um, yeah, listen to it. So, that's it for Streetscape and Planning. Next, she's uh, the former transportation commissioner for the for Mayor Bloomberg um, <coughs> in New York City, and she was hired by Bloomberg Associates. He has a private consultancy firm that works for free um, to various municipalities throughout the United States to guide them on um, alternative transportation planning. So, bikes, pedestrians, everything. So, you want to announce the next step? Yeah, so, and so our next meeting is uh, November 10th. And I think it was the third if it was like the progressing. So if you're like me, cancel the third and have mm -hmm. again because I end up forgetting to cancel the third. Yeah, you know what? November 10th is a Monday, unless I need a mistake, which I really yeah. so yeah. It is a Monday. Monday. Oh, is that the Monday that Veterans Day is celebrated? It's the Monday college. <laughs> I mean, better than yeah, that's a so. better than say it's the 11th. So it's the 10th at 2.30. And also, sure. not, you know what? The where, where at? Um, probably at our office. At Good. the top thing. That works for Safer. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, 2.30. 2.30. Okay. And I'll send out a save the date. Okay. Um, security. We have Carrie. Can't believe that. Um, yes. I got one. The cameras. Yeah. Right. Yes. Um, you want to start to? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Just a uh, very brief update. LAPD's uh, camera installation is progressing <laughs> quite nicely. The recruiters have been installed as we reported at the meeting last week on top of Kilroy, and that took about five months to do, but it was done. Um, the Yucca Coina camera is done, so now there's six of their nine cameras are in, or excuse me, seven of the nine cameras are in. The two remaining are uh, Salmon Schrader and the Indian One camera for LAPD. So um, it's good news, and that's pretty much it for the cameras. Okay. Karen, you so we, as you know, we've been working this year on our situation with um, public drinking in the mid. Um, and among other strategies, we're looking at um, creating a, 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 a 
system of what we would call donation stations to encourage people to um, give money to local charities instead of handling. So we have a meeting scheduled on the 28th. We're identifying, we're going to try to identify five to seven businesses initially to kind of be a, a focus group um, to determine whether or not there is support for this idea because in order to pull this off, uh, we would have to have these um, meters sponsored by different businesses. And um, a lot of cities across the country have done that where they use the sponsored meters to seed the fund that ultimately will help to fund contributions to local nonprofits. Um, so we've asked um, Trader Joe's and CIM, McDonald's, um, Amoeba, uh, the Wax Museum, Egyptian Theater, some of the places where we've got kind of concentrations of panhandlers to come together to learn about the idea and um, express their you know, thoughts about whether or not something we should do. Um, we also have been contacted by the folks up in Pasadena. Um, there was some news um, publicity a couple weeks ago, maybe a month ago, about a program that started there called the Real Change Movement. And so they've installed these meters throughout Pasadena. They have an amazing website which just kind of documents, you know, the fact that it is enabling people by giving money to panhandlers and that this money is actually going into a, a fund that is going to be matched by um, the United Way. So it's leveraging people's contributions, which is really interesting. So they reached out to us and asked if, you know, we might want to consider piggybacking on their program instead of designing one from scratch. Heard from them yesterday. So I'm going to set up a conference call with um, the council office and them to see if, if, if that's even mm -hmm. like your brand. Yeah, and they have beautiful messaging, beautiful materials. The branding is already created. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen it? Like, yeah, yeah, I live in Rock, so yeah. And, and, and how long has it been in? Not long. No, not long. Um, long. 90 days. Yeah, maybe. So, and anyways, how they fund it. Do you know? How is it? Through um, individual, individual sponsorships. And do you know how many they have so far? I don't know. But we have, through the council office's efforts, we do have 12 meters that have been donated, including the um, internal apparatus that would allow people to do credit card contributions also if they wanted to. So we got the meters, it, and we're going to put them on private property, not on public property. And I'm not sure if they're on public or private in Pasadena. They're on private. They're on private. Yeah, it makes a lot easier. So um, anybody who would like to be part of this focus, focus group discussion beyond the 28th, just let me know, and um, love to have you be part of the conversation. That's that. Thank you. Thank you. And then the other thing is that we have had a presentation um, last month, at the Security Institute meeting, and we're going to have another presentation on the 28th. Last month at the Security meeting, um, the legal director for the ACLU came in, and they just issued a report that underscores some of what we've really noticed here in Hollywood, where we have a lot of people who, who suffer from mental illness, and they're homeless, and they just keep cycling through the jail system um, and end up back on the streets again. Um, and in fact, uh, just as an aside, the, the young man who killed Christine Calderon um, was sentenced this week. Apparently, the jury deadlocked, and they could not convict him of murder, so they convicted him of manslaughter. And he got 11 years for killing her, which I don't understand. But it's interesting because he, he was a person who suffered from mental illness, and his mother was again quoted in the article, you know, saying that she knew her son, you know, had these issues, and he'd been in and out of jail 46 times. So, you know, we have seen <coughs> evidence in Hollywood of people who really do need to be treated and not jailed. And so when this gentleman came to the um, Security meeting last week, it was a pretty compelling presentation. I think Carol was there, and Fred, I don't think you were at that meeting. Fabio might have been there. So, the, the one before the last. Right, at the library. Right. Yeah. yeah, at the library. So, um, the Hollywood Bid Board, um, what, what, what um, Mark Ridley Thomas on the Board of Supervisors has uh, proposed a motion to um, set aside funds that, you know, right now they're going to build a new jail for L.A. County, a $2 billion jail. And they've got 3,500 beds set aside for um, mentally ill inmates. So 
they're trying to start a discussion about using some of those monies to, to gear it toward treatment facilities for people with mental illness instead of jail. And so this is part of just um, community groundswell to let the Board of Supervisors know that the current system is broken, it needs to be fixed, you know, we support looking at that solution. The Hollywood Bid Board voted last month to support this letter, um, and so we're asking the Chamber is going to be looking at it, and the Sunset Bid Board, we're trying to just generate um, business uh, interest in this idea. So there was an action uh, to support this effort to divert severely mentally ill offenders from <coughs> jail to treatment. Um, would somebody like so to? So moved. Okay. And Charles has seconded. All those in favor? No. Abstentions? Passed. Great. Just uh, as an aside on that, just, I'm just curious, and maybe some of the statistics um, on this are going to be important, obviously, but just um, to know, like, the percentage of um, uh, the, the mentally ill homeless that are veterans, that are actually veterans, that are actually, you know, it's a big uh, issue in the uh, county supervisor race, and then how many are women veterans. Mm -hmm. And these are, I think, really compelling arguments as well uh, to, to put, uh, put more uh, effort into the movement. Yeah. Um, and then this particular case um, with this Christine Calder, I mean, a lot of the a lot of the arguments are that the you know these most of these people are harmless, and in in, in most cases they are, but in some cases they aren't. And this is a um, this is a, an example. And I'm sure a big part of the defense for this case was the mental illness issue because this this guy had quite a quite a history of mental illness, and that's probably why it's a, you know in part anyway why the sentence was less. Yeah, it's, it's hard to know what happened. That the if you read the article, it said that the it was hard to get it. It was, it was, a, it was a hung jury, so and you never know how those things play out with the jury. And, exactly. Yeah. All right, so uh, thank you. We have another nominating committee. Who is um, Carrie? Is that you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm Dr. Sarah. So um, we have appointed the nominating committee. It's um, Chuck, is it a volunteer, Elizabeth, and then Richard Belzoni, who's our fearless ad hoc member. We, yep. um, our bylaws require that we have one um, non board member participate in the nominating committee. So um, I'm hoping that all of you saw and that you received in the mail um, a letter soliciting your application. And then in your packet, I've included a, an application and also a list of those outgoing um, board members. We have three vacant seats right now um, due to uh, position changes, uh, people moving out of town, Katie Seymour and Keith Rigadio. Um, and so we are also... Um, and seek an application from hopefully Melissa, who had to leave a little bit early um, tonight. And then Carol, we're hoping to come back. Um, Arthur, uh, is, his term is expiring. His term expire in February. So, um, and then and then Brian. So, so if you want to, you want to. Um, Maybe again for another two years. Yeah. 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 You know, I, I, I feel like the old guy. Yes. Yes. So we want any comments or anything, or how yeah. does that work? I don't want to feel like I'm. Our bylaws do not um, limit having each one. So we have two more people that are not going to be able to participate. They're only two-year terms. So, um, but if you want to be considered, you have to submit the application before October 31st. So put that on the calendar. Yeah, one thing, you know, this board has two-year terms, which kind of it feels like the House of Representatives mm -hmm. coming back. And um, I don't know why we didn't go with three-year terms, because, I mean, that allows for one-third coming, one-third year, one-third going, and a little less, um, you know, potential turnover. It's something we could, you know, consider for the future as a bylaws amendment, just to stretch it out, out of it. I mean, Thank you.
Yeah. But there's a lot of work to, you know, every two years to have to be submitting applications again for all the interviews. Is that something that the nominating committee has to recommend? Or we could bring it to the board. It could, it's just a very simple bylaws amendment. And what would have to happen is that you'd have to, we'd have to think of the math. So a couple people might just be on for a year and then they come back for three years. We could, that's how we'd have to do or you'd stay on for three years, we, we would have to like stagger number the seats and then stagger it yeah. so that we get on to a new yeah. rotation. Yeah. Do we need to, as far as the special, make a motion to do that or it's not on here? You could just advise us and we could bring it back as an action item. There's a possibility, I mean, there's seven, there's seven seats open plus the three vacancies. This would be a great opportunity to do something like this. Yeah. yeah. Well, we couldn't do it this yeah, time, no. you know, because you'd have to change the bylaws for the next season. So right now you're you're in the shoot to do it, but to change the bylaws for the next year. Yeah. So, although when when those bylaws were written, there was a discussion about two versus three year, and I thought that one of the rationales for the two year was that at that time there were a few members of the board who <coughs> whose employers were not willing to commit them to three years and that two was something of a compromise, as you can recall. Mm -hmm. I mean, does, but does that not bother anyone who's currently on? Or that you know, their, their bosses don't have a problem with three year terms? And obviously if somebody can't fulfill their term, they, they just resign. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so we could bring that back for you to look at. Uh, any new business? Uh, there is some business. <laughs> um, I uh, I shared this with a couple of friends so far. Um, I uh, my many of you know my husband um, Ben, and he uh, he works for a developer, and he uh, he was uh, recently. Um, and it involves having to um, oversee some projects that are in Northern California. So um, he is, it's, so what this means is that we are going to be splitting our time between <coughs> in Southern California. And as of January, um, I'm going to be um, transitioning into an independent contractor. So I won't be working full time for the bid any longer. Um, but I continue. I, you know, it's up to you all. But I um, and we haven't had a full staff conversation about um, what my role is going to be. But I really, would like to um, work on your planning and streetscape projects, anything related to um, those two areas, just so that I can continue working with all of you. I love I love being here, and I don't want to. Don't want to let it go, but um, but we have this opportunity and we need to we need to take it. So. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, we're going to um, on on behalf of four of us kind of get together, big whiteboard, and um, kind of parse out, you know everything that, that has to be done between the two bids, the different skill sets, and the kinds of things that we could retain Sarah for her. She is a, I, I told her, she is a, a nationwide expert on some things related to bids, if, and certainly in the state of California. If, if she wanted to be busy, she could probably start a consulting business on alleys and, you know, trees and how to deal with all the, yeah, you know, trees, 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 animals, et cetera. Yeah. So, which then I started describing how busy she'd become. She's like, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> but anyway, so we're gonna parse that out and look at how we staff this board and how we, um, and um, you know, just deal with uh, maybe hiring, you know, more help in the office. So we're gonna work on that over the next month. We've got to get that figured out for the Hollywood bid board budget as well. Are we required to have a full time? Uh, executive director, or can we maybe? Well, we, uh, you know, I, I need to understand with her, it's not a bi coastal, bi statal um, uh, <laughs> situation.
situation, whether or not it's something that she wants to come back down for meetings, or whether she's about to look on projects, in which case one of us would take over, you know, managing the meetings again. We basically get 26% of our time in the aggregate in the budget. Well, on that note, any old business? Uh, okay, staff reports. Um, the only item I just, you know, in my 15 years, um, you know, we're subject to the Public Records Act and the Brown Act, and um, I, in that, in, in our tenure, in my tenure, I haven't ever received a request in, um, until this past week, and we received a couple from Mr. Wiskin over here. Um, so I just wanted to let you all know that we had been um, emailed and um, several documents were requested, and so I uh, just wanted to make you aware of that. Okay, uh, we have our next meeting November, November 11th. Yeah. And um, the one thing that's not on here that I just wanted to throw out also is the YMCA comedy night that's coming up in the city. Can you bring the postcards? If you <laughs> guys haven't been, this is a wonderful fundraiser. Um, of course she's awesome. <laughs> so every year they have, um, usually the tickets are always, uh, you know, VIP tickets are the only ones available, so they're always $250. And this year they have um, general admission tickets for $125. So it is, um, if you, you know, can't afford the $250, then um, that's a great option. But it is... One of the most fun, uh, fun. It's the fun in fundraising. It's mm -hmm. like the. Um, I am not a big stand up comedian fan, but I go to this and I, my belly laugh. I mean, it's sore the next day because I'm laughing so hard. And it's just such a, a fun atmosphere. And there's no like rubber chicken dinner. It's just like, you know, you just go and you have cocktails and you laugh and um, raise money for the Y. So I'm not a member for the Y, but. Right. Full disclosure, but um, I just um, want to just to uh, the horn of you know the, the comic night. I do have an, an announcement about our fire drill event oh, yeah. on Thursday, and we do this uh, probably every other year. We do the actual um, luncheon out in our back parking lot, and I would like to invite all of you on Thursday. You're welcome to come and just get food and leave. <laughs> we can't keep them to make the fire kill me too. And then the bonus of being on the bid board is you don't have to go down the stairs. You can just show, show up. All I need from you is to leave me your name. Because we do make sure that all of our tenants have to go down the stairs of the building to get the, the benefit of the bonus lunch. So um, I'd love to have you. We've got the, the Grub Girls are making the food this year, so it should really be yummy. And uh, noon. On Thursday, and it was 64. 64, 64 in the back parking lot. We'll validate your parking if you want to drive over. I, uh, I always like to suggest walking unless you're going too far. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, we will validate the parking. Love to see you all. Thank you. Okay. Any other business? 